I've been having withdrawals. I can't do it anymore. It's been three months. I've tried my best not to use an 85 millimeter lens, but no more. We gotta go back to the basics. A little backstory into why I haven't been using this 85 millimeter lens in 2021. I really just wanted to challenge myself to see what type of portraits I can create using other focal lengths other than 85. So I've been using 23s, 35. I just wanted to get outside of my comfort zone and really try to create some amazing pictures outside of the normal lens that I used. But uh, we are back now. We are back using my beloved 85 millimeter f1.8 from Sony. I am in love with this $600 lens as you guys may have seen my other videos I talked about how awesome this is, but we're gonna go into a little bit more detail today about the 85 Without further ado, let's roll that patented intro and I'll catch you on the video In my personal and professional opinion, the 85mm lenses are truthfully the most versatile focal lens for portraiture. I honestly think that the 135 is the best overall within the portrait genre, but the 85 tends to give photographers a little bit more versatility when shooting. With an 85mm lens, a photographer can shoot a pretty close-up headshot as well as pull further back to get more of the subject as in a full body shot. Just be mindful that you're paying attention to the amount of space that you're shooting in. Like I mentioned in a lot of my videos, the 85 millimeter lens is extremely tight. So if you don't have a lot of room, this lens may not be the best option at the time. The 85 millimeter has a realistic natural portrait look. It just makes the subject that you're shooting much more interesting and more alive. The sharpness that you get with the 85 millimeter lens is absolutely amazing. This is also considering that there are low priced and high priced 85s. The $600 Sony 85 millimeter has been my bread and butter for the past few years as you can now see some of the photos I'm showing you on the screen. If you haven't used an 85 millimeter lens yet, then you're gonna soon experience the real definition of sharpness. These things are ridiculous. Bokehlicious bokeh. I know for some photographers, this isn't much of a selling point. So if you're one of those that don't care too much for bokeh, go ahead and mute this next part of the video. To my bokeh lovers though, my God, the 85 millimeter produces. It creates this creamy and dreamy blurred effect in the background. I can step in a bit towards my subject and boom, the background at F1.8 and lower is completely obliterated and it just creates a dreamlike effect. I love shooting at night where the traffic and building light colors are amplified in my photos, creating some amazing, beautiful bokeh. So much bokeh in the background. The shallow depth of field that's associated with the 85 millimeter lens is really good. And yes, you can achieve this with a 105 or a 135, but nine times out of 10, the 85 is much lighter and cheaper, therefore making it the no brainer purchase. One of the advantages of an 85 millimeter lens is that the maximum aperture is always set at 1.8 or lower, meaning that these lenses are really good at shooting in low light. I've used my 85 millimeter f1.8 at night without flash many of times and have gotten some really good results. Last summer, I was out at night with Emily taking some street portraits with my second favorite 85 of all time, the Sigma 85 f1.4, and we created some amazing images. With COVID-19 still at large, social distancing has become the new norm for the past year. The 85 millimeter lets you create an ideal working distance from your model while still being able to instruct them without yelling. When I use my 105 or 135, I usually have to stand a ways back and then hope they see my posing gestures when I want them to switch it up a bit. So the 85 millimeter lens is not just for portraits. I want you guys to get into the habit of using your gear for anything that you want to use it for, because you'll never know if it's going to work or not if you never shoot outside of the box. I've used the 85 before for landscape photos, food portraits, 
different product photography as well. So there's a plethora of different things that you can use this 85 millimeter focal length for, and it gives you a different perspective on the photo as well. So again, don't be afraid to go outside of the regular norm. Yes, this is an amazing option for portraits, but you also have to try new things. And that's the only way that you're gonna progress is if you try new and different things. So shoot some landscape, shoot some nature photography with it, shoot some architecture, whatever you want. Just get out and try something different, y'all. Because again, don't stay clumped up within the box of what people tell you to do. Go out and create for yourself. That's the only way you're gonna discover your own talents. So before really knowing my gear, I was just out buying things based on my budget and YouTuber recommendations. I bought my 85 millimeter F 1.8 in early 2019 and paired it with my crop sensor camera, the a6500. At the time, it kind of just sat on my closet shelf because one, I didn't really know how to take portraits with it. And two, I had the Sigma Trinity of the 16, the 30 and the 50 F 1.4 lenses. So those were my main workhorses. But a few months into owning it, I just got up and started shooting with it more. Trying to understand crop sensor focal lengths are tough. But I didn't realize that I had a mini 135 on my hands when I paired it with the A6500. But it took amazing photos and when I upgraded to full frame later that year, the 85 was the only lens I owned for a while. So if you want to use an 85 millimeter focal length on an APS-C camera, I could get a 56 millimeter lens and that's around an 84 millimeter equivalent on a crop sensor. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the 85 millimeter lens and which focal length do you prefer to shoot portraits with. Thanks again and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.